Hello, hello, welcome to jasonnewland.com. This is Chronic Pain Tuesday. And it's not a celebration, it's not like a, a weekly celebration of pain. It's a weekly session um, whereby we can explore different ways to deal with chronic pain, different ways to accept how we're feeling, um, different ways to change how you're feeling. So my name is Jason Newland and more than in any other of the hypnosis sessions or um, anything really that I've done before I put a bit more work into these there's a degree of research a degree of um, preparation that I don't normally do and um, part of that is due to laziness um, part of it is because I quite like to just see what comes out of um, my head, my mind, creatively, to see what arrives, you know. So, earlier today I was looking through my, um, one of my books, looking at the uh, hypnosis in pain management section and just looking at some ideas that I could discuss and um, as we've already discussed in the first three I think this is the fourth one um, so I'll just hit the microphone stand sorry about it um, I have talked about distraction techniques uh, how important it is to accept uh, what's going on it's not I don't think accepting is saying it's okay um, in a sense of well we're, we're not going to try and change anything let's we'll just accept it um, no I'm not saying that accepting it's there accepting if you've got a chronic pain condition maybe an illness maybe something where um, you don't you know you can't do anything about it it's there it's a physical thing so accepting that it is what it is and then moving forward because I was thinking about bear, <laughs> bear with me with this one I was thinking about premature ejaculation earlier and I was just wondering, you know, something like that to some, to some people it's like, it's a really, really big thing. It's, it's a major thing. Well, I think in some ways the way to overcome <laughs> excuse the pun the only way to um, move forward from those type of situations where you've got a mental block in your mind um, and causing yourself extreme stress over something is to get to the point where you just accept it you just don't care it doesn't matter so if someone's lost a limb and even though that is you know obviously it's a life-changing thing a life-changing experience um, and possibly traumatic you know trauma leading to the, the loss of limb
but you know, has do we have to carry that around forever though? The the trauma, I mean. How useful is it? Is it useful? How useful is it denying, you know, that the limb's gone? How useful is it wishing that you still had that part of your body? What is the point in that? It's a natural thing to do, but what, you know, moving past what is natural, there's plenty of things that are natural that are very harmful to us. So it's not about just doing what's natural, it's about choosing what you do next. And having that choice gives you your power back. by accepting that that part of the body's gone, you get your power back. Bearing in mind, you may have lost a leg, but the rest of your body's still there. Now, I don't say this lightly, I mean it. The rest of your body's still there. And it is a life-changing situation, but it could be a life-affirming situation. You've survived something. It can change your life in a positive way. So going back to premature ejaculation. There's something about that, the accepting and just saying, I don't care. Let's just have sex, it doesn't matter. Because then the pressure's off. No pressure, when the pressure's off, things relax. And when things relax, things do change. Things like premature ejaculation changes. Things like stress over loss of a limb or the so-called phantom limb pain I say so-called because I think it does a disservice to people that have got it by calling it phantom and because it's real to that person they're in pain you know it's not um, a made up thing and when I say well it's just in your head well all pain is just it all comes from the brain it's just a signal it's a signal from your brain to that body part that determines whether or not you feel whatever sensation you feel in the same way as a small child falls over they could smash their face open. Their eye can be out there. And you can just laugh. Laugh at them and say, oh. And they won't get worried about it. They might be in pain. But you can just like cuddle them, say, oh, kiss it better. And you'll be all right. And just, you know, give them a big hug and laugh, make them laugh. Another child can fall over, not, not a scratch on them. But you run over like they've just been, you know, eaten by a dinosaur or something. And they'll be crying and crying and panicking and everything like that because that's what they expect. That's their reaction to you. That's their natural reaction to your reaction. Which is why you can cut your arm and see lots and lots of blood. And you can have a reaction to it. But that lots and lots of blood might be not mean anything. Just a little cut, it's just bleeding, that's it. 
and you might think, oh my God, um, my arm's gonna have to be cut off, or you might think, it's just a cut. I'll wash it off, that's it. It's not a big deal. So I think it's interesting how uh, our focus determines how we feel. Our focus determines the level of that physical sensation that you experience. Or our interpretation of our focus. So our reaction, I guess, to what we see or what we think. see some blood and then the natural reaction whatever that may be equals a feeling and then you react on that feeling and so on and so forth and over and over and over again and you may think oh it's got blood therefore it should be painful shouldn't it of course yeah then you start to feel pain But if it's just a cut, just a cut, that's all it is. You cut your finger, might be a bit painful for a few minutes, then it's gone. It's really not a big deal. As long as you wash it, make sure it's not got no bits of glass in it or anything like that. Keep it clean, it's fine. Don't need the pain anymore because you know what it is you've got a bandage on it which means you know you need to just be a little bit careful with it for however long it takes to stop bleeding and cause you know a scab to grow over to protect that part of the body isn't it interesting how the body naturally already has that protection in the same way as the adrenaline kicks in in extreme situations so people don't feel pain or don't feel the full extent of pain works in the same way emotionally get you know helping people to get through a, a funeral you know or the whole pop process of you know the paperwork and everything to do with bereavement including the funeral and then you know you get through all that hold it together and then you can let go and go through the bereaving process not that you need to wait until it's all over before you do that but sometimes the emotions just naturally seem to stay in, the, the feeling stays in, we hold it together. So your focus on the pain affects how it feels, affects your experiencing of that pain so I guess right now would be a good time to actually focus on a part of your body which has chronic pain and just focus on it just notice how it feels right now And as you focus on it, just notice what your natural reaction is to it. So focusing just on that body part. And notice what your natural reaction is. Maybe there's 
something verbal inside your brain you know you maybe you're saying something to yourself you know oh shit oh it hurts or whatever not again what words to say you know what words are you saying to yourself and how do those words affect how you feel so once you say those words how do you feel and the reason I'm asking this is because a lot of stuff goes on in our unawareness so we seem to think that you know the you focus on the part of your body and you feel the pain and that's it in the same way we think that we go to the supermarket or you go online you order your groceries and they get delivered and that's it well actually there's a lot of process that goes on that you're not aware of you know like the deliveries like the packing of the deliveries the picking of the veg you know of the vegetables and the various different things um, off the supermarket shelves then you've got the actual deliveries to the supermarket you know all that stuff uh, all the way back to the people growing the food maybe in other countries even uh, you know there's a lot going on but you're only well, and I myself are only aware of really the two steps or maybe the three steps ordering it online getting it delivered and then putting it away into cupboards and freezers and fridges and stuff so they're the three steps where in fact there are many 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 steps so in order for you to feel the chronic pain in uh, your leg, your arm, your shoulder, your head, your stomach, your back, wherever it is. It takes quite a few steps. It might seem to be instant, but it's not. And the more you realise that it's not instant, and the more steps that you realise that there are, and they come into your conscious awareness, the steps that is, it then stretches that moment out so it's no longer an instant second it's stretched which is something that then transforms the way that you feel so that instant second of feeling the pain you know focused on the body part feeling that pain that physical sensation that changes to you focus on the body part something triggers you to focus on the body part you may say well yeah the pain but there's something else it could be a thought of the past thinking of what's happened previously uh, you know the idea really when you look at chronic pain is divide it into three to thirds you've got remembered pain you've got future planned pain and you've got the pain that you got right now remembered pain is basically what happened in the past whether it was 10 minutes ago or 10 years ago future pain it's what you're expecting to happen it happened yesterday therefore it's going to happen tomorrow and sandwiched in the middle of that is well if it happened yesterday and it's going to happen tomorrow then obviously it's going to happen today and you've got this big chunk of physical stuff all connected together and there's no reason for it to be connected together because the past is gone future ain't happened yet obviously so cut it cut it into three get rid of the past get rid of the future 
of no consequence at this moment. Focus on just now. And I like that idea. I like the idea of just focusing on now, just focusing on how it is right this second. And the thing is, when you watch my videos or listen to my audios, you start to get used to feeling more comfort physically and emotionally. And this is just something that happens naturally. Nothing you can do about it. Um, it's a positive thing. I mean, there is something you can do about it. You just don't watch my videos or listen to my audios. But it is a positive thing. It's just a natural response. Uh, you hear my voice and you feel more relaxed. You see my videos, you see me here, and you feel calmer. And that part of your body that was causing you maybe problems before you decided to listen and watch this session, watch this video, you now feel more relaxed and calm in that part of your body. This just happens naturally. I don't need to sort of tell you to do this because the more you watch me, the more you listen to me, the more relaxed you become quicker. Sometimes, maybe instantly. Sometimes all it takes is just thinking about me for you to become relaxed and calm. I know that some people have told me that they listen to my vlogs, which have got nothing to do with hypnosis, but they still, they still feel relaxed, they tell me, when they listen to my vlogs even though it's not relaxation, it's not hypnosis, it's none of that stuff. It's that association, you've got the association there. So, and of course you have that as well. So now, focusing on that part of your body, something happens in your mind. It's not just an instant feeling, there's something happens. You have a thought, you maybe say something to yourself. And you've got all this other stuff, the memory of the pain in the past, the memory of weird enough, I know it's not memory, but it feels like a memory of the pain in the future. It's like you've somehow gone into the future and you've experienced it and you've come back and you're remembering what's about to happen. expectation I guess an expectation is a very strong thing so what would happen if you expected it to reduce what would happen if you expected your physical pain to just reduce so whenever you noticed it you expect it to reduce it's just what you expect, it's just what you naturally expect to happen. How does that change how you feel when you think about it in that way? When you just imagine how good it would feel to just expect change to naturally occur and for comfort to increase whenever you basically focus on a part of your body. So it got to the point where whenever you focused on your left leg, you felt comfort in your left leg. Or your right leg, you feel comfort in your right leg. Or your left arm, you feel comfort in your left arm. Or your right arm, you feel comfort in your right arm. It doesn't have to be relaxed to the point of sleep. You can just be relaxed to the point of relaxed. Relaxed to the point of comfort. 
still functioning, you know, still able to do all the things that you would normally do. Still able to walk down the street, still able to, you know, have a conversation with people, but at the same time, feeling physically calm, feeling physically comfortable, feeling mentally and emotionally calm and comfortable. Because that's what you expect to happen. You expect to feel good. There's so many things that you and I, we all of us, expect to happen. I go to bed at night. I expect to wake up in the morning. I expect that. I expect that no, I'm probably going to get up at least once a night to go to a toilet. That's what usually happens. I expect that the weather's going to get cold, you know, during the winter. I expect these things to happen, and when they happen, it just reinforces what I expect. And I've had 46 years of, of weathers, you know, of winters and summers and springs and autumns and stuff. So I expect these things to happen and I've woken up every day for the last 46 years, 46 and a half years in fact. Forty-six and four years, 46 years and four months. But anyway, I've woken up every day. So I expect to wake up. I'm not saying I wake up because of expecting to. But expecting to reduces any anxieties or stresses. Any needless worries. I just go to sleep and then wake up. I expect the sun to be shining somewhere. <laughs> Even if it's above the clouds, it's going to be shining because it's light outside. If, if there's no sun shining, there'd be no light, it would be dark. So I expect the sun to be there. I expect to hear the birds singing outside my bedroom window, which I do every single morning. So expecting to focus on your part of your body which was causing you problems in the past and expect it to reduce in discomfort and increase in comfort like having a, a little pleasure injection or being having some kind of you know magic an aesthetic cream just wiped on that part of your body. Cool and just erasing any physical sensations that you don't want. And expecting that to happen. Because it is worth remembering that your body wants you to be happy. Your mind wants you to be happy. Your body wants to feel comfortable. Your mind wants to feel relaxed and comfortable. Your mind wants your body to feel comfortable. Your mind loves you. Your mind cares about you and does everything it can to help you just needs a little bit of help sometimes. It needs you to get out of the way. Because things like worrying, tension, stress, uh, negative thoughts, um, harmful thoughts towards you know yourself, that stuff gets in the way of your natural healing process, the natural process of feeling calm reducing discomfort and increasing comfort. And 
But this happens naturally because you expect it to happen. Your mind expects it to happen. So if you take away that conflict, take away, you know, those thoughts that are harming you, erase them, get rid of them for good, so that they no longer get in the way of your mind. So your mind can do what it needs to do, your body can do what it needs to do. You know, they're connected. It's a thing called a neck. The mind and the body are connected. And what you do when you get stressed and tense and start having the negative thoughts is you get in the way. You cause a roadblock, a traffic jam, whatever you want to call it. You get in the way so that those healing processes in your mind and your body can't get together, can't join to give you relief physical and emotional relief that you expect to have. Because the more you have it, the more you will expect to have it. And these are just ideas, these are just thoughts. may be useful, hopefully useful. I would say necessary and needed and important for you to just get out of your own way, to let go of whatever part of you is you know causing that mayhem and negativity and hostility towards yourself that self-talk that self abuse in a sense you know just let that let it go think of it like the the wicked witch out of the wizard of oz and just chuck some water over it let it melt Every time you get a negative thought, you know, where you're verbally being horrible to yourself, saying something nasty to yourself, picture it as the witch from the Wizard of Oz and throw a bucket of water over it and watch it melt. You can hear it say, I'm melting, if you like. And keep doing that. Every time you see the words, you can just stop the words there morph them into the witch chuck the water over it in your mind and watch that witch melt or you could just freeze the words and chuck water over the words and watch those words melt getting rid of all obstructions melting away all negative thinking and thoughts and when I say negative thoughts I'm not talking about negative and positive in a sense of always feeling positive about everything in the whole world always I'm not talking about that I'm talking about noticing when you're being horrible to yourself when you're being hostile to yourself when you're calling yourself names when you're telling yourself um, you know that you're always going to feel this way you're always going to have this pain you're always going to this and that chuck water over that witch of negativity because that stuff is getting in the way of your mind and your body healing relaxing calming those parts of your body that need it and building up that expectation every day, one day at a time. Because the more calmness and comfort you experience, the more calm and comfort you're going to expect to experience. 
So your expectations will increase. Expectations of comfort, healing, relaxation, happiness, acceptance. Expectations of being able to enjoy your day and no longer be a victim, but to be a victor, to be the winner, to have conquered negativity, one witch at a time, melting that witch with the water. Allowing that positivity, that acceptance, that love to spread between your brain, your mind, your body. And that whole process of thinking about something and then experiencing it gets stretched. So it's no longer a mindless act like it was before. There's a process going on and you now have the power, the self power to take control of that process, to observe it, maybe even enjoy it. Enjoy being able to change how you feel, as well as accepting who you are as a person and loving yourself. There is no room for hate. There's no room for that. This is about expecting love, kindness, expecting that towards yourself, from yourself. Every day having more and more positive thoughts towards yourself. Telling yourself that tomorrow is gonna to be a good day. Reminding yourself of your expectations of healing both emotionally and physically. Every day, more healing, leading you forward into the future, the kind of future that you wish to have for yourself, regardless of your physical situation. You can still be happy. You can still enjoy your life. And yet it can be a challenge. But isn't life supposed to be a challenge? Isn't that what makes it fun? The challenge of knowing that you can learn to expect each day to be remarkable. You can expect each day to be full of kindness, noticing the kindness around you, noticing the kind words that you say to yourself. And you can be grateful for that. And by noticing every time you say something kind to yourself internally, noticing it is the best reward you can have. Just noticing every time you're kind to yourself. That 
brings us to the end of this Chronic Pain Tuesday. I hope that it's been of use to you and I know that I do waffle on a bit but there's a, a purpose behind what I do there's an aim attached to these videos and I hope that you can come to a better place learn to have more acceptance and also to feel more comfort and less discomfort so please subscribe and like this video if you do so and I will see you next week in my next Chronic Pain Tuesday session. You take care of yourselves. Bye.